Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Friday, May 27, 2011, and uh, this is an update on the Mueller Motor Project or the Mueller Motor Magnet Motor Project. It's about 10:30 a.m. right now. I'm out in the garage. Uh, there wasn't a lot at the shop for me to do today, so I decided to take a personal day and spend the entire day in the shop. And I will be broadcasting all day live from Justin TV. Uh, the controversy wages on about whether or not this motor works, and and uh, there are people out there attempting to completely uh, debunk the technology by putting together replications that uh, do not conform to the specifications that are laid out by, by Bill Mueller in his original design. People are winding coils using, using uh, threaded bolts, solid iron, as their magnetic cores. Uh, they're using single cores. They're using... Uh, uh, steel homebrew reed switches to to act as, as switching mechanisms for the for the timing of the of the uh, pulse generator for the for the driver coils, all of which are completely irrelevant and all of which do not pertain to this design. Um, I do not claim that the design works. I do claim that I am attempting to find out. And anyone attempting to deter me from that is only adding fuel to my fire and, and uh, motivating me to work even harder to complete the project and prove one way or the other, but I will complete the project. Uh, I do not leave it to supposed experts who have better tools than I do because most of my audience doesn't have tools. And quite frankly, if I can get this to work with the tools that I've got, you can get this to work too. But I'm not telling you to go out and build it. I'm telling you I'm trying it. And we'll see. You can take what I do or not as, as valid. But if you are get a, uh, an individual who is giving to calling others liars and disingenuous about the conduct and, uh, and the intent of their experiments, you are placing yourselves in grave legal peril. And that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, back on to the experiments. Last night, I was, in, uh, I was messing around with some of my permanent magnets and, um, uh, and with the ferrites. And um, I discovered a very interesting phenomenon that Romero had described in in the construction of his project in that if you take a balancing magnet and put it to one side of the ferrite core and take your movable magnet and bring it closer to the core if you have like poles facing each other what happens is at a distance the moving magnet actually repels the ferrite because the magnetic lines of force are extending through the ferrite core beyond beyond the end of the core and reaching the movable magnet. So you have a field that's reaching the movable magnet, repelling it, until you get to a certain point, and I found with the, with the cores that I'm using, that point is roughly about one quarter of an inch away from the face of the, of the ferrite core. Uh, at that point, the fields cancel and the, uh, the magnet, magnet has no interaction with the pole piece whatsoever. And you can move the magnet laterally across the face of the ferrite and it, it does not interact with it at all. If you bring the movable magnet yet closer, what happens is now the attraction of the movable magnet to the ferrite core overcomes the repulsive force being provided by the balancing magnet at the back side of the stator. Um, I discovered that the, the shorter the ferrite core, the, the, the closer I can get the movable magnet to the face of the ferrite core before that balance point occurs. Um, so what, we'll, what I'm going to do is, in, in my original build, I had the backs of the, the ferrite cores extending beyond the back of the stator. Uh, but using the technique that I, that I showed with the, with the Dremel in the Dremel dr drill press, I can take the whole assembly and just set it on the table and just 
run 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 the uh, the ferrite core around the cutting disc to score a line, and I can actually fracture this off and shorten the length of the uh, of the ferrite cores in place. So I'm going to be shortening the length of all my ferrite cores to this to this length. Uh, this, yeah, excuse me, to this length here, and uh, cutting all of them down so that I can I can get that uh, effect uh, that I'm looking for. So instead of a one eighth inch gap between the end of the of the ferrite cores and the and the movable magnet, I'll be going to about a quarter of an inch, which is where I actually uh, find that balance point occur, where the where the uh, attraction to the ferrite and the repulsion of the balancing magnet cancel each other out and and provide a zero cog effect. Very interesting effect. Um, To set the length of the of the ferrites, what I did was I just simply put some blocks on a, on a flat metal disc that are one and one sixteenth inch high, and then put my stator plate on top of that. Set the the ferrite cores down through to glue them in place so that they are all the same length away from the stator, and uh, glued glued them into place with, of course, goop marine adhesive, and. Uh, they set overnight and they're ready to receive the coil bobbins. So here's an idea of what the assembly looks like with the coil bobbins in place. I'll be winding the coils this afternoon, uh, hopefully getting them in place and start wiring them up. Uh, what else? I guess that's about it for now. I need to get back to work, but I appreciate everybody watching and following along with the project. Um, I hope you, I hope you uh, are enjoying seeing me replicate or attempt to replicate the, the Mueller motor. I hope I'm successful. Uh, I don't know if I will be, but again, I will let the evidence speak for itself. Uh, my intentions are entirely genuine, and I can assure you that I will, I will give you the results as they come in uh, without any uh, distortion. So that's all for now. Zero fossil fuel from the garage. Peace, everyone.